I'm Harry, this is Drum Electric. So the premise of this video is just for drummers who are looking to incorporate backing tracks into their live shows and you've seen that Ableton is the industry standard but you don't really know where to start because it is a terrifying piece of software. It's not like the others, it looks a bit aggressive, it's a little bit confusing to use. So uh, this is just a really quick start guide on how you can find everything, how to navigate everything and most importantly just get started with it. So to start, which one do you buy? Because there's three versions and it's all expensive. So first thing, obviously go to the Ableton website. That's step one. We can do it, but we can do it together. Let's go to live. What's new in live 11? Some things. Let's go to buy now. That's what we really want. So I'm currently logged in, which is why this is grayed out. So my apologies. There's three versions. Intro, standard, and sweet. I have standard because I only use Ableton for backing tracks live. I don't use anything else for it. The reason why I went for standard rather than intro is because if you scroll down, you can see you're limited to 16 audio mini tracks, 16 scenes. Uh, like you just, you're just, you just limited. You're limited. So I just wanted unlimited audio MIDI tracks, unlimited scenes, all of the other stuff. That is a huge step up from the intro and it just made me feel safer. So there you go. Now you can get sweet. For me, how I visualize it is sweet is a lot more aimed at the guys that want to actually sample within Ableton, record, create some real good stuff. It's your main door. That's why you get sweet because it comes with all of like the MIDI instruments and some other things that's on this list right here. Yeah, there you go. 17 software instruments, 70 gigs of sound. Like it's ridiculous. So I don't need that. So I didn't get it. So I have standard. Now, one more thing just to put a asterisk in there. I've got standard. I did also buy a thing called Max for Live. It basically means I can use external MIDI instruments, different effects, and have a lot more control over it because I like to use a software called Able Set, which I'll get into at the end of this video. You can go to the timestamp optional extras if you want to go there now. But that was just a little additional thing that I use because I trigger a lot of MIDI when it comes to live shows. Now, when you open it for the first time, this is what it looks like. A little bit terrifying, but also simple because it's just kind of empty at the same time. So let me break this down for you. On the left-hand side, this is where you'll find everything. So this is where your sounds are. You've got your drum racks, different instruments, your audio effects, things like that. There's Max for Live that I was talking about. That's where you can find everything all there. Now to the right of that, you've got the main sort of section. This is called session view. There's two views to Ableton and this is one of them. It basically means that rather than having all of the tracks in like, like you'd find in like Logic, Pro Tools, they're all like in a big long list. These are one next to each other because basically what happens is all the tracks go up on this first row here. You skip all the way to the right. You've got your reverb, your delay, your send tracks. And then the master. So when you hit play, if you have a look at these four squares here, when I hit play, there you go. You can see them all trigger at the same time. So it works across and it basically means that you just have a clip of something rather than being able to see the whole waveform. Underneath that, so we've got two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks, as you can see from the label at the top. In the audio track case, where the input is, so right now you can see in input one, that's where my microphone's coming in. The monitor, in, auto and off. So that just basically means taking this, for example, off, you can see no audio coming in. Auto basically means that when you hit play, you can listen to it back. And then in now means that as you can see, the audio is coming in, hit record. Now I'm ready to record and it'll take it. Then you've just got audio to master, in this case, the master bus here. So that's just the outputs. And that's where you can change everything from like external outs to the sends to that sort of thing. So that's where you can find it. Then you've got your sends volume. So going to sends A, which is reverb in this case, that's how I can send it there. You're panning here, activate and deactivate the track, solo, and then record arm. Lovely. Finally, at the bottom here is where you're going to drag all your effects for that one audio track. So for example, if I'm on the audio, I'm on track one, let's go audio effects, dynamics, chuck a compressor, I can just drag it in there. And now you can see I can change the compressor for that audio track. I can delete that by hitting the backspace button. Okay, moving Taylor Swiftly onwards. You can either press this little grid button up here or hit the tab key and switch between session view and arrangement view. Now, if you're like me and you've got these weirdly blocked out bits, just hit this little orange button there and they all disappear. Now, this is arrangement view and it's probably what you're most likely used to if you've used Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, that sort of standard door. Ableton's a standard door, but you know what I mean? The only difference here is you've got your timeline in the middle as per normal, but your tracks on the right hand side rather than the left hand side, they you know, got to be different. You know what I mean? All the other ones look the same, at least this one looks different. Anyway, exactly the same thing, like I said, in session view, so the same tracks. I've got MIDI, MIDI, audio, audio. You can see all the controls to the right-hand side. This is basically as if you've taken session view, lobbed it on its side, and now you can see the timeline as well. I work mostly in this because if I now drag in some audio, if I hold the command button, 
they go above each other as you can see now it looks like a normal door normal daw which brings me beautifully onto my next segment which is importing audio which is literally drag and drop job done now there's a really cool feature in ableton which if you double click on a track as you can see from the bottom here this is where you can edit everything when you import it you might have this warp feature on now warping is basically ableton's feature of being able to like move and adjust the time of that audio track so if you wanted it to be quicker or slower without affecting pitch that's what warp is which is really cool and really helpful because sometimes i want to speed up a track and i don't want it to be all like you know alvin and the chipmunks doesn't do that on here really handy but sometimes it does it automatically you can just double click on each track and hit warp that will turn it off and then it just puts it back to the original tempo speaking of tempo let's actually build this backing track so at least you can see what it looks like so as you can see on the right hand side i've got bass click drums instrument and melody this is just a track from epidemic sound because i don't want to be hit with copyright i'm not sponsored or anything it was just the only thing that i could think of doing so i'm just going to drag the click to the top this is at 145 beats per minute so i'm just going to click on that and change it in theory when i exported it it should be bang on Nailed it. Anyway, now here's a funky thing about using Ableton. Normally in a DIW, when you hit stop, so the space bar, and then you hit play, it will play normally where it's basically paused. As you can see, the, the timeline thingy is like bar six. But if I now hit play, it goes back to the beginning. So if you wanted to move around the track, you can either click somewhere in the timeline, you can see this highlighted bar, plays from there. That's how you select it. Or if you move your cursor to the top here where the bar numbers are, you can see that little speaker. It jumps around. As you can see, it kind of loads a second. That's because Ableton runs at an equal length. So if you, for example, were going verse, chorus, and then back to a verse, if you hit the back button, it wouldn't immediately jump. It would wait until that bar is done and then jump back. And obviously you can change that with Ableton settings. It's really handy and why a lot of the people use it for live performances, because it stuff like that just makes the difference when you're on the stage and it makes it musical. The only thing with jumping around with that sound option is say, if I play it from here, if I now hit spacebar, it goes back to the selection rather than that point. So if you did want to play it from a point, make sure you select it rather than using the little speaker function. Going back to session view, if you wanted to import audio here, slightly different process. So here's all my audio tracks, drag and drop. As you can see, it'll naturally do it in a list going down here. Again, if I hold command, that will go across. There's all the audio. So now if I hit play, That's how that works. So now you can see it works across. So if I then had a song, like the next song in the set, I can hit play there, it'll play that one, and so on and so on and so on. As you can see, when I hit play, it starts it from the beginning every single time. So if, for example, this waveform here where I'm on the bass track, I can't click in and then play it from a certain point. Kind of has to be from the beginning, which I'm not a big fan of. Not a big fan of. But I like how it's there. It, it get, it, you know, it's got its uses. So instead, what I do, if I'm in arrangement view, like I am here, I just use session view as a mixer. So I, when I've got loads of tracks in a big show, I can just see across where everything is and it just makes a more sense in my brain. You don't have to do that, but... That's just how I work in my brain and then that's fine. The last little cool feature that I'll just talk about, you can add little markers. So if I just hit the little set button here after selecting this part of the audio, I could then add a marker, command R to rename it to intro. And then I'm just gonna select over here and be like band in. Now that what that means is I can just click on the intro. It's gonna play from here. And then if I want to skip to the, the band in section, I can use this little arrow head here. So let's try that. <laughs> So as you can see, you can jump around and it keeps it equal to one bar, but it now gives you a lot more control because you can MIDI control that. It's a wonderful thing. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned optional extras. So welcome to this fun part. Like I said, I have Max for live and that basically means I can use different devices. Now, what's a device you ask? A device is, could be something Ableton's built, something someone else has built. It's a very clever, handy dandy thing. I use Ableset for example. And this basically means if I have a full show and say it's a band that plays a two hour show, but sometimes they play a one hour show, I don't have to rebuild an Ableton set list every single time. I can just move and rearrange the song. Able set is a great way of doing so. I've used it for ages. I'm not sponsored or anything. I just love what they've done. The other thing that you might see as an industry standard is this app called Setlist by Strange Electronic. Same premise, very, very powerful, very expensive as well. 
but it is good it is an industry standard and uh now that when you look over at the musical director or whoever's running tracks or the playback section you might see this and you can be like ah they're using ableton with the, with the setlist app one person that i always recommend if you're using something like the spdsx or the spdsx pro is ableton drummer basically just a drummer that decided to make some stuff for ableton that's really really useful so if you're getting started with this support your local drummer and grab some of their resources because they are very good anyway that's my adverts done i'm not even sponsored by anybody any of these people this is just stuff that i use and i love and i think you might love it too so that's your introduction to ableton hopefully from here you can start to explore it further my recommendation is just start to put a track in there and explore because as you do it some questions will come up and then you'll find the answers to them and that's how your knowledge will grow with that if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section down below because i'd love to help wherever i can and with that i hope you have a fantastic day